Have you guys seen XKCD 1172, otherwise known as Workflow? Changes in version 10.17. The CPU no longer overheats when you hold down spacebar. Longtime user writes, This update broke my workflow. My control key is hard to reach, so I hold spacebar instead. And I configured Emacs to interpret a rapid temperature rise as control. Admin writes, That's horrifying. Longtime user writes, Look, my setup works for me. Just add an option to re-enable spacebar heating. Every change breaks someone's workflow. No matter what sort of change you make, no matter how ridiculous relying on that thing may be, if you have enough users and the project has been around for long enough, there is likely someone relying on every little part of the project. If it's a bug that people rely on, it's not a bug, it's a feature. Now, this example is intentionally ridiculous. However, sometimes life imitates art, and something about as ridiculous very recently happened. If you are at all interested in GPUs over the past couple of years, you're probably aware of a trend known as GPU undervolting, where you take your GPU and then forcibly limit the amount of voltage it is going to accept. Obviously, this does make it run slower, but especially in the long term, is going to lead to a lower power bill, it's environmentally conscious, and also can potentially extend the life of your GPU. This was especially common with people doing crypto mining, but even for just regular people, their GPU may be idling and using way more voltage than it actually needs to use, so it might still make sense to limit the voltage. But as with most things, going too far with it may have the opposite effect. Now, for a couple of months, this has not worked the way that users had traditionally expected. This was first reported over on the AMD GitLab by Federico de Senna three months ago. Navi21 setting a power limit that's too low for the current power state will actually disable it. I discovered this issue while testing LACT on my 6900 XT. LACT is an AMD GPU control panel. I reported it and it seems to be a problem in the kernel driver that can be easily reproduced. Run a game or something that will put full load on the GPU, it has to be a stable full load. Lower the power limit to 150 watts. Instead of switching down to a lower power state, the card will start drawing well over 300 watts. I've seen it go as high as 420 on this card. The power limit is applied correctly when the GPU load is low enough for the card to switch to a lower power state. I don't know if this affects other cards or just Navi 21, but I imagine all RDNA 2 cards are probably affected by this. Overclocking must be enabled in the kernel, of course. Now, this was not just an isolated issue on what could have potentially been a faulty GPU. Other users noticed the exact same thing. Some of those users went and made duplicate issues. RX 6700 XT minimum power limit not detected correctly. Under power limit on RX 6700 XT too high, possible kernel 6.7 plus issue. All of these problems were being caused by one fairly small kernel change added to the 6.7 kernel, DRM AMD PM support for getting power one cap minimum value. So when you buy a GPU, you're generally not buying it from AMD or Nvidia directly. You're buying from companies like Gigabyte, Asus, EVGA, and these different companies are going to customize the board of the GPU the way that they want to do it. And when they do that, those different boards are going to have different power limits, which they set in the firmware for that GPU. This change makes it so the kernel will ask the firmware, hey, what is your minimum power limit? Prior to this change being added, which this change was fixing a bug, it didn't ask, and it just assumed the minimum power limit was zero. So you could try and set the power limit to no power, and it would think that is a valid value. What that would do to the GPU is very GPU and firmware dependent. Buggy firmware though might just assume, okay, well, turn the GPU off. Now, obviously any sensibly designed software for configuring your GPU power limits is not going to let you try and set it down that low. But let's say the minimum power limit of your GPU is something like, let's say 100 watts. Now, most applications would probably let you set it down to something like 
50 watts, even though the GPU isn't actually supposed to go down that low. However, and this is the important part, depending on the GPU, depending on the binning, it might still be stable, even though the GPU was never supposed to run a voltage that low, it might still work. And that's why users were doing it. They tested it, they found that it works considerably lower, and now that they can't set it down that low, now that it's actually respecting the firmware value, which they feel is a little bit too conservative, now their voltages are way higher than they're actually used to. For these users, this is seen as a regression, even though they were never supposed to be able to do that in the first place. This also led to a fairly lengthy discussion over on the kernel mailing list. Someone known as Roman Beans noticed that there was some sort of problem that he wasn't really sure about. He tried it with core control, lacked, tux clocker, and they all had the exact same issue. So he asked if anyone could get bisect the issue to try and find out what was going on. And it turns out it was that patch I mentioned earlier. Haven't seen any statement from the AMD GPU developers now CC'd yet on this there, but might have missed something. From what I can see, I assume this will likely be somewhat tricky to handle as a revert overall might be a bad idea here, we'll see I guess. This got a reply from Alex Dusha. We've mentioned him in previous AMD videos, he's been in the AMD Open Lab since 2007. If there's anybody who knows about AMD GPU changes and AMD kernel changes, this is the person. What he said is, this change aligns the driver with what has been validated on each board design, as in this is the limit set by each add-in board partner. Windows, this is the important part, uses the same limits. Using values lower than the validated range can lead to undefined behavior and could potentially damage your hardware. So Linux being able to set lower values was never the intention of the driver. This change brings the driver in line with what was possible on Windows. But it's not that simple. Waltz is now working the way that AMD intended as of about three months ago. This is not the way it's traditionally worked. Basically, since undervolting was possible on Linux, there wasn't a minimum limit that you could set it to. So you could undervolt as much as you wanted. And when you've had something like that available for so long, Obviously, there are going to be people that rely on it, and obviously, it is going to be considered a regression. As such, here is a reply from Thorsten Leemhues of the Linux Regression Tracking. He says, Thanks for the reply. Yeah, I was expecting something along those lines. Nevertheless, it's as far as I can see, still a regression in the eyes of many users. I'm not sure how Linus feels about this, but I wonder if we can find some solution here so that users that really want to can continue to do what was possible out of the box before. Is that possible to realize or even support it already? And sure, those users would be running their hardware outside of its specifications, but is that different from overclocking, which the driver allows, doesn't it? If not, by all means, please correct me. Which was a fairly reasonable question with a fairly reasonable response. Again, from Alex Dusha, sure. The driver has always had upper bound limits for overclocking. This change adds lower bounds checking for underclocking as well. When the silicon validation team set the bounding box for a device, they set a range of values where it's reasonable to operate based on the characteristics of the design. If we did want to allow extended underclocking, we need a big warning in the logs at the very least. Basically the reason why they are putting in this protection in the driver isn't to protect you as a user. Yeah, that's the way it can be framed to make it sound nice. It's to protect AMD and their add-in board partners. If there is a user who underclocks their GPU and underclocks it really, really badly and actually does damage it, that is going to look bad on them. That is going to look bad on their add-in board partners and they are going to have to deal with it. So instead of doing that, they're like, okay, the add-in board partners say this is where it's safe, let's not let you go under that point. Like they don't let you go over it if you're doing overclocking where you are far more likely to damage something. So if we could just add a warning about this and just keep the feature, why don't we do that? Requiring a module option to be set to allow this as well as a big warning in the logs sounds like a good solution to me. Regards, Hans de Goad. And again from Thorsten, yeah. 
especially as it sounds from some of the reports as if some vendors did a really bad job when it came to setting the proper lower bound limits, which are now adhered, and thus higher than what we used out of the box before that patch. Once again, this one was applied. Side note, I assume those lower bounds checking is done in around about the same way as it's done on the Windows driver. Does that one allow users to go lower somehow, say after modifying the registry or something like that, or through external tools? Windows uses the same limits. I'm not aware of any way to override the limit on Windows offhand. This whole thing reminds me of XKCD 1172. The problem is another module parameter is another interface to maintain and validate. Moreover, we've had a number of cases in the past where users have under or overclocked and reported bugs or stability issues, and it did not come to light that they were doing that until we'd already spent a good deal of time trying to debug the issue. This obviously can still happen if you allow any sort of over or underclocking, but at least if you stick to the limits, you are staying within the bounding box of the design. Again, a lot of this isn't to protect you as a user, it's to protect themselves. They don't want to deal with a stupid user who sets a limit that obviously is going to break something. Again from Thorsten, yup, of course, all of that is understood, but we have this no regression rule for a reason. Adhering to it strictly would be as far as I can see be counterproductive in this situation. But give users some way to manually do what was possible before out of the box, in my honest opinion, is the minimum we should do. Maybe just allow that parameter only up to a certain recent GPU generation, that way you won't have to deal with that at some point in the future. Alex again disagrees. The problem is the cumulative effect of all these parameters. Every time there is some change in the driver, someone disagrees and there is a push to add a module parameter for it. The driver already has too many module parameters and it's hard to keep them all working consistently and in every possible combination. Moreover, the module options are supposed to be mainly for debugging. The driver sets proper defaults for all chips to ensure proper operation. However, lots of random forums seem to treat them like they're a recipe for some special source, so users are constantly setting various combinations of them because they read somewhere on a forum that would make their GPU run faster. More often than not, this leads to problems. It sounds like Alex isn't a very big fan of the, uh, the GPU modding scene. Maybe he has something else to say on that, but it sounds, at least from this, he's not super happy about it, at least when users come to him with their problems. Even if we did make the option only valid for these specific chips, there'll be the expectation that future chips will support it as well, because someone will hack the driver and test it, and it may work for them, and then there'll be a push to add it for those chips too. Yeah, I have a feeling he's not a big fan of the GPU modding scene. And again from Thorsten, I know I fully understand this. Sorry for being a pain in the ass. I'm just arguing for a parameter because I think that's what I should do in this situation due to the regression aspect and our number one rule. But the important thing with the rule is what does the boss think? So he reached out to Linus to find out what he thinks. I mentioned this twice in Mails to Linus he didn't get involved, so I assume things are fine the way they are for him. And then it's of course totally fine for me too. Thanks again for all your help and sorry for causing trouble. But in my line of work, these might or might not be a regression from Linus' viewpoint, so let's get him involved, sometimes just happen. But no matter what the kernel and upstream says to the users who are affected, this is still going to be a regression. But no matter how many comments you leave in the upstream repo, this patch is not going to be reverted. No matter what you say, no matter how you make your case, that is not going to happen. So saying things like forcing people to use more power than they actually need by artificially limiting the controls to do so is not just wrong, but also very unethical and should be illegal. At the end of the day here, everything involved is open source. You don't need to go and modify the proprietary firmware. It is a change in the driver and the driver is open source. So you can go and revert the patch yourself. There's probably going to be third party packages for it. And yes, that is very inconvenient, but it is better than not having any power whatsoever. But what do you think? 
Were you undervolting your GPU? Is this something that affects you? Or did you not even realize this was a thing that people did? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, Sully Verapay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And have you ever played a game called Scale about an electric lizard?